Serge, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Can't complain. Life's good. You know, can't complain. Thank you for being on Needing Dough Canada. Athletes have a very interesting relationship with money, right? Athletes come into so much money at such an early age when they don't have much experience with money. They're most vulnerable to money. They're not that educated around it sometimes. Whereas everybody else, they make their peak earnings in their 30s, 40s, 50s. So an athlete's life is actually flipped. Mm -hmm. So what we like to do is we like to have these conversations. How do you navigate that? What lessons have you learned, good or bad, that can maybe help other people throughout their life? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are scared to talk about money. They get shy to talk about money. But what, what, it's important. Why do you think they're scared to talk about money? I don't know. Why, I don't know. People are always so like afraid to ask questions about money, I find. You know, or about ask for advice. I don't think it should be like that. Yeah, one thing I just learned is like when they, be, when they become about, you know, when they come about asking advice, you should not be shy. It's only you. Nobody see it. It's only me. If I'm asking advice about something, it's only me or you here. Everybody want to see what I'm doing good. Everybody gonna see what I'm what I'm doing is right, yeah. right? But nobody gonna see or understand where they are learned that from or who right. told me that it's you. Right. So I think like when it come about that, you should not be you shouldn't be shy, shy about you asking. You shouldn't be shy, and a lot of people are like, I don't want to bother somebody or I don't want to ask the wrong question. And I always say, first of all, there's no stupid question. Uh -huh. You know, ask all the questions you want. But also, if you talk to successful people. They like talking about how how did they make it, and I know you're like that too. So that's why we're here, and, okay, and hopefully you're gonna inspire more people. Let's um, do it. So, Serge, we've talked to a lot of athletes, and and a lot of athletes say, "Look, we came from nothing. You literally came from nothing. You grew up on the streets of Congo Brazzaville, in immense poverty, political un unrest, war, homelessness." Surgeon, here you are sitting today, champion. Talk to me about your early years, your childhood. Talk to me about your early life a bit. I mean, like, you just say everything. Like, I'm sure you, you saw my documentary. I produced it. Yeah, so you produce <laughs> exactly. You, you don't produce it. So um, you say almost everything. That's, that's how I go through my life before to, to become a champion, before to be here and sitting, sitting with you here today. Right? And I had to go through a lot, you know, but also, and, you know, everything I go through, you know, it made the person I'm on now today. Nobody just was born with everything right away or to know everything. It's not wrong to come, to start from uh, nothing, struggle to become, you know, the person you are now. One thing I learned about, um, I was reading a book, uh, it's saying in the book, all the big things have small beginnings. Did you always have that faith that you were going to achieve greatness during all those hardships? Did you know that there was going to be this light, that this greatness was waiting for you? If I tell you I know 100%, I'm lying. This is what I want, and I want to do anything to go get it. Okay, and I'm saying I'm going to believe in myself. I'm going to, I'm going to have faith in God. I didn't know if, how big it's gonna be, if it's gonna be at the point where you have to become an NBA champion, or you have to, I didn't know if at the point where I'm gonna, I wanna be drafted, I'm gonna be in the NBA, I didn't know all, the, all that. But one thing I know for sure is, I'm gonna go get it. You know, a lot of people talk about luck, right? And me and you have a similar philosophy because I've heard you say this, that yeah. there's no such thing about luck. Luck is always putting in the work, yeah. and when that opportunity comes, Come. luck is hard work meeting opportunity. Luck is always gonna go. It's gonna be around you. It's gonna be up and down. Too. Up and down. Yeah. You never know when luck, luck is gonna come. Mm -hmm. You never know. But your hard work, you're gonna, it's gonna prepare you when luck is come, and you're in. Yeah. And if you're not prepared, luck is gonna come and then go away. Mm -hmm. And then next time it's gonna come back again. You're not prepared. You're gonna keep going away. And you were ready. You know. When, when and the opportunity you now, came, you, be ready. You, were, you were ready. And then when the opportunity came, I was ready. Now you have many nicknames. You're a man of many nicknames. Yeah. Mr. Avec Class. Uh, yeah, Mr. Avec Class. Uh, Mr. Avec Class, 100% pure from the motherland. Yeah. Mafuzi Man. That's the one right there. Yeah, original man. Mafuzi Man yeah. is my favorite. Yeah. And it's my favorite because you told me a story once. Yeah. About Mafuzi 
and how he was born on Christmas Day. You know, on Christmas Day, normally in, in Congo on Christmas Day, is, is for kids, right? The parents, parents take their kids outside for, for pictures, to go in the park, eat some ice cream. The kids dress nice, dress up nice, you know. In my case, I didn't have none, nothing of, none of all the things, even food or, mm. you know, toy or, you know, clothes, nothing, so. And you were by yourself? Yeah, by myself, yeah. My, my mom, my mom passed away when I was seven, so I always grew up with my dad, but my, my dad was not there either. He was in jail, so it was hard, you know, and then that's where my fuzzy, my fuzzy mentality come from, you know, and I tell myself, you know, I, I'm going to get it, man, you know, is this is not the end of the world. But you kept saying to yourself that you, you are, you are Mafuzi man. I'm Mafuzi man. Mafuzi man don't give up. I'm original man, you know, yeah. I don't give up. And Mafuzi means a pure man. Pure man, a pure know, man. somebody don't give up, somebody who always, you know, stand, stand there for the, themselves, mm. you know, somebody who, no matter the situation, they're gonna, they're gonna go get it. And how, how old were you at that time when you were saying that in your head? Uh, at the time, I was like what? I was like 11. <laughs> Yeah. At, at 11 to have So I start, you know, like normally as a, as a young kid, all you have, to, you have to enjoy the moment. Yeah. You don't want yeah. nothing to think about it. You just go to school, you go back, you play with your friend, whatever. I have a vision, bigger yes. pictures because right. I was saying, well now, this moment is, 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 uh, is lost for me already. Right. But you were envisioning it. You were putting it into the world. You yeah, were manifesting you, I envision, it. I'm envisioning already. first yeah. and then I go put it in work. Yeah. Maybe if I'm not living the life the, the way I want right now, at this moment, at this age, like everybody, any kids, but it's okay. The life is still going on. Right. Why? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep fighting till I can live the, the life the way I want to. You had that belief, man. Yeah, the belief is the power of belief. Without the power of belief, you cannot do nothing. And then later on in your early years, early teenage years, you know, I know you found yourself alone on the streets. And you had a moment where you were living on the streets, living in parking lots or cars, doing odd jobs on the street. What were those years like? Those years was, it was hard, man. This year was hard. Um, I have my friend who used to work at the parking line. So I asked him to ask him if he can let him go, you know, sleep in some people's cars. Because he got the keys, everything, you know, he worked in the parking line. Okay. Right. You know, so yeah. he got the keys. So you're going to say, okay, and go out there. So, um, yeah, it was hard, but it really, it really helped me to, to see things, you know, clearly. Anybody else would have maybe gone down a different path. And you're here saying that that time actually gave you clarity. Just to have that mindset at 11, 12 years old is, it's incredible. Yeah, because I could be lost too, man. Listen, I have a lot of friends who, they just take different directions. And, they, and today, I don't know where they are. You know, and uh, it is hard, you know, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to give up because I didn't give up actually make me even stronger now, yeah. you know, and I didn't give up. And um, the funny thing is when I go back home in Congo, I have my friends sometimes, uh, well, one of my best friends, he, he, when we talking, he say, I don't understand why you are so much control with money. You so calm, like money, they impress me. People think you're you know? fancier than what you really are, by the way. Yeah, but... <laughs> like, I know you're the most simple guy. Like, you eat simple food, you don't party, you don't drink. Uh, I think maybe shopping is your only thing that's... But, you know... Well, even, listen, even shopping. Okay, let me tell you about shopping. I want people to understand that. It comes from, from back then. Yeah. It's not just starting now because... No, it started from back then. I was young, tall already, but not like my dad. But I used to ask my dad for the, his shoes, clothes, jeans. Mm -hmm. Hmm. to dress just because I wanted to look nice. Even I didn't have nothing, I was clean already. Hmm. You know, so now thank God I have an opportunity to go buy anything I want. Yeah. Of course, but yeah, like, like you say, I know a lot of people think like, they, every time when they see me about, you know, about having class, fashion, they think I'm very fancy. <laughs> you know me, I'm like. No, you're like, you're like such a simple yeah. guy, you know. You're very conservative in the way you spend. You don't like wasting money. You don't like wasting anything. Um, I don't even think you own a car. Do you even own a car in Toronto in all the years that you've been here? Uh, not really. You don't I have a like, car. I, I also heard a rumor about you that you didn't buy your first car until your fourth year in the NBA. Yeah, because 
listen, uh, when I come to the NBA, okay. in Oklahoma, I have free car. How did you have free cars? Dealership in Oklahoma, you know, uh, he's a very, very good friend of mine, and uh, he used to work with a lot of players too. So he used to give me Hyundai. <laughs> he, listen, he used to give me Hyundai every year before the season. So, of, you know, you know, as an NBA player. So I asked myself, this car, if I have this car or I buy the the nicest car, what the difference? It's going to get you from point A to drive, point B. Exactly. It's going to get you from here to here the same way. The same way. This yeah. one is going to be driving, this is going to be flying, or, or it's going to be driving <laughs> in the same way. I have to drive, I have to everything, right? I say, I don't, care. I, don't care. I don't really care. Any car is car. How old is your daughter now? 14. She's going to grow up in a completely different situation yes. than what you like. Like, completely different. Oh, yeah, completely different. <laughs> like, it's, it's even... <laughs> It's, it's different, different movies. Yeah, <laughs> totally different. Different movie, movie yeah. you know. But uh, I, I just give her sometimes a little hard time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I want her to understand that she understand. Like I, I've seen little moments of you telling her that you used to clean the streets in the Congo. Yeah, I I, to I've seen you tell her that. I, I have to tell her that. So she have to. I want her to grow with that, to so she can appreciate everything. You know, obviously she can have anything she wants now, and I'm sure you spoil her. But do you still keep her on a bit of a budget and an allowance? No, I have, I have time to spoil her, you know, time to spoil her, I have time, mm -hmm. and then time her, time, uh, and I have time where, okay, now, you know, just be, live, uh, she has to be this normal. Like, I'm going to spoil her, and then we go back in line again, you know, I'm going to spoil her a little bit, you know, so she'll <laughs> right. understand. I'm going to give an example, right? If she only have iPhone, right, and she have nice iPhone, 10, it just came out, brand new, I buy her a nice iPhone. And if an iPhone 11 come out, and her iPhone is still good, I said, 12 year old daughter. And she I tell me, dad, oh, I want a new phone. I'm not gonna buy her there. You need to appreciate what you have now. You have an iPhone, and you need to understand, I didn't have even phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so you have yeah. iPhone. I want to get your quick takes on something. Yeah, that, all good. right. So, who's the Raptors teammate with the best business sense? Fred and Norm. What is it about Fred and Norm? Just, just being around with your teammate, your yeah. friend. We talk, we talk a lot. Even the way they ask questions, you know. That's so, what we're talking yeah. about asking questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you could run any business, what business would that be? I'd be in the real estate business. Real estate? Yeah. What would be your advice to a kid who's about to sign his first big contract? My advice is today, you do the best you can to save your money today. Mm. The future is not guaranteed. The Raptors rookies, what do they need more help with? Fashion advice or financial advice? I'm never going to give a rookie fashion advice first before okay. financial advice. Okay. So what's the better show, Evet Class or How Hungry Are You? Oh, uh, all of my shows. Why are you going to to choose? <laughs> what's the better show? Come on. You, you want to know? You know the answer. <laughs> you, no, you, you, know you don't know the answer. No, no, I can take it. I can you don't know the answer. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying like, I'm good with uh, Hungry Are You. Okay, okay. Because my first baby. That was <laughs> the first baby. Exactly. That's the safest. That was the first baby. It's all good. So when you came into all this money, into millions of dollars. Yeah. Did you create a team around you? Like who's who's in your inner circle? That's the portal too. You have to have a good people around you. Yeah. People, you know. But also you have to understand too a little bit. You have to know if people's good or no. Hmm. Right? You have to have your own judgment. Yeah, right? your judgment. You have to understand. Yeah. But it's hard for a young a young uh young player to have their own judgment. So I guess uh, all, all, all I can say is to have a good people around you then. Hmm. But when you first came in, was that were you like, who do I trust? How do I? Because you're seeing no. more money than you could have ever imagined. Yeah, when I when my first my first show when I, I get the mm. I get I get the, I get here, uh, I have people, but like I say, like me, I already know a little bit right. myself. I already know a little bit where I want to do. I already have a little vision. All I have to do is to stay focused. Mm. And my goal it was basketball and play more than four years in the league. If I reach that goal, anything is gonna come. Anything is gonna come. So that's a lot of people where a lot of young kids don't understand. Like when they come to the league, they want everything at the same time. No, it's gonna come. It's gonna go nowhere. Those other businesses are gonna come. Those other anything is gonna yours, come. Yeah. Yeah. If you play, if you play, if you play your four, first four years or rookie years, mm -hmm. this is the moment is to play more than four years. I'm going for. 
So now you achieved that. So now what's the goal you think? Now, now I achieved it. Now everything, everything I wanted come. I go get it now. Another amazing thing you did yeah. is you entered the content space. Yeah. You know, a because lot of now, because now I'm yeah. already I established myself. And and you did something very entrepreneurial, and I give you a lot of credit for this. When you entered the content space, you funded How Hungry Are You yeah. yourself. You believed in it. You know why I funded? Yeah. Because I have, I have a possibility to fund it. And why, uh, how I got the possibility to fund it? I put everything I had in my mind in one goal, mm. to get there. And I know if I get there, I'm gonna do anything I want. So that's, that's, that's the no, difference, that's, and that's, that's the key. And, and that's the advice that we can give to people is set up your foundation, like set up your base. The base, the base so get, is the get key, your base focus on the base it. first. Yeah. Even for everybody out there watching, they don't have to be, you know, um, basketball but players. No, it's player. not about being it's, a basketball it's, player. It's find what you're great at, yeah. invest the time, and focus become on great that, at that. Put your mind, your energy in it. One thing, yeah. when you get it, trust me, you're gonna do whatever you want. You're gonna try something here, it didn't work, okay, cool, you go back here because you already are base. If you walk, you keep going, you keep going. But but I'll say this though, is that even though you have fun yeah. and you, you know, do the shows and you do the content space, yeah. Serge, and I've been around this, I'm witness to this. You will play a game on the road, you'll get back at like four in the morning, you'll sleep, you'll still wake up, you'll eat right, you'll practice, you'll put in the work, you'll come on set, you'll shoot six, seven hours on set, go to sleep on time, Wake up, practice game, be ready for a game. Like, like you put in the work. I don't think people realize that. And that's the other thing about, you know, having these conversations is that, is that whatever you do, you do 100%. I'm always be honest with me. I always look at the mirror and talk to myself. I didn't get, I didn't get here like, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not judging the way all the people got here. That's, mm. that's good for them, you know. You know, everybody have their turn, but the way I got here, nobody didn't give me nothing. I had to put in work. I had to work 10 times harder. Right. I'm not saying, I'm saying 10 times harder than normal guys because they only have all the fundamentals. Hmm. They only have all the respect. I didn't have that. So to me, to be where they are too, I need to work 10 times harder than them. I took four years with art vacations, my first couple of years. You can ask Jordi. Wow. They, have to, they, they have to force me to take my first vacation. I remember I only took like two weeks. I went to Miami. <laughs> you know, but I took four years without vacation. Season's over. Go right away, start to practice. The only reason I'm next to them, only reason I'm copied with them, because of my hard work. So that's my talent. Hmm. That's all I have. When this is all over, yeah. what, other, what other businesses interest you? Have you, have you thought about that? I mean, after, the, after, after basketball all said and done, what's next for you? No, right now I'm just trying a lot of different things. And the key is to do something you enjoy doing too. Not just doing because just doing for money or for something. That's very important too. Why? You want to do it because it makes you happy. You know, I, I, because I enjoy playing basketball. That's come first. Now everything's coming after and it makes more fun now. But the key about this is that you have to make sure you're enjoying doing that too. That's why now I'm, I'm, the, process, I'm the, the place where I'm trying to do, I'm trying, I'm trying different things. And you're, and you're you know, discovering new things Dif- about yourself. New things yeah, now, yeah. Just, you know, just, yeah. just discover new things. Yeah. When you came in the league, was there a player that you looked up to for his financial side or his business sense? Was there somebody that like, or somebody that took you under their wing? Magic Johnson really inspired me a lot, yeah. you know, because I, I was reading his book. Incredible entrepreneur and yeah. businesses. So, you know, when you read like, yeah. you know, a guy like Magic Johnson, you read his book and you read everything, you just, you learn a lot of things. Are there any players in the league right now that you look up to and you're like, that person, I really admire how they've built a brand outside of basketball? Uh, if I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna say LeBron James. LeBron, yeah. Yeah, LeBron James really inspired me the way he do things off the court. And, and both those guys, they've achieved incredible yeah. success in business, but yeah. they also invest back in their community. Yes. You know, which is, you know, and, I, yeah, and I can yeah. see a lot of parallels and similarities mm-hmm. in the way you are as well, right? Yeah, so. Because you believe in empowering the people around you. Yeah. You could be on a beautiful holiday somewhere, you could be doing whatever you want in the world, but you take time every year to go back to the Congo and you give back through your Dreams Academy Basketball Foundation through the Serge Ibaka Foundation, through orphanages, medical treatments, 
I've seen you give the gift of hearing to people. Serge, you go there, you put in that time on the ground. That's why I gave my peace and mind, my joy. It's not come from having a, a nice car or living the best life or, or going from fashion week, all that same. That's why I gave my peace and mind. That's, I sleep good at night. As amazing as these annual trips are to the Congo, yeah. and I've seen it, you are a rock star in the Congo. Like literally within seconds, that, like you'll be on a street and thousands of people will mob you. And for the most of it, people want to show you a lot of love. They just want to be in your presence. They want to feel you. They want to touch you. They want to say hi to you. But I know also, sir, there's a lot of pressure on you because you have to support a lot of people. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but you have to understand that. That's the difference. Like you, even, it's, if it's, even like from you from outside, you're going to say, that's crazy. You know, like, I, can't, I don't know how you do it. That's crazy. Like you, you may, you may, you may be stressed, stressed out. Like you may be a little scared. But you know, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not the person I'm, I'm right now today, mm. I would be in the same position like them too. I would be doing the same thing. If somebody came from outside, who's successful, somebody come, I would be the same thing. How many people do you think? Just give me a number. How many people do you think that you directly support back home? Especially like yeah, but it's, cousins, sister, because you have eighteen brothers and sisters, uncles. Yeah. Just give me a number. How many people do you think that you directly support? It's a lot, but <laughs> is it probably more than thirty people? Yeah, it's a lot. But yeah. uh, I'm gonna tell you something. I know God is watching. That's the only reason I do that. Mm. Right. That's why I, I enjoy doing that mm. because it's hard. You know, it's hard because, like you say, even a family. Today you give, tomorrow you say no. You're the bad person. Hmm. Generally, for, for, for people out there watching something that you've learned and you've experienced so much in your life, what is your one big piece of financial advice? You don't okay. let money control you. You control the money. Because you're the one who made the money. <laughs> yeah. Right? The money you made me. I'm the one who made the money. I have to work hard to make money. So you control the money. And in life, we all try to chase greatness in our own way. No matter what you do, you want to be great at what you do. But when you break it down, and you know, I'm honored to be talking to you because you're great in so many ways, but when you really break it down, what does it take to be great? The power of belief before anything. Mm. 